This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, and uh, we are here in the Sorgatron Media Studios, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It is the holiday week, so we're doing a pre-recorded episode for everybody, and uh, deep diving on a topic. This time it's social media, and uh, why not have on our social media guru uh, uh, and former zombie wrangler uh, herself, Dutters is with us, Katie Dudas. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Happy holidays. <laughs> so uh, thank you for doing this. And, 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 and we've done this before, I think, in, in some fashion over the years, too. But I, I think it was good to we're going to get into kind of a, a state of the social media, what you should be looking out for and what the kids are doing. Right. <laughs> what are the kids into now? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But first, please go check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast and check out the awesomecast Facebook page and group. Of course, we're live streaming every Tuesday, including this will at least premiere every, on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time on the Facebook Live, as well as over on the fa- uh, um, awesomecast YouTube page and on the Sorgatron Media uh, Twitch page. Uh, maybe not all of those will be going this next week, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but anyways, but no, when we get back to the new year, of course, all that will be live across the board there. And uh, of course, thank you to our audio partners, our friends at the 405 mediacom and our friends at postindustrial.com uh, for supporting the shows. Thank you to our Patreon supporters at the Coffee Club level, our friends Matt Weller, John DeGore, and John Carmen. And at the Fan of the Show level, our friends Michael Fedor, pghmuseums.org, uh, Professor Buzzkill Podcast, and Dave Potter. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the show. And you can, too, if you like what's going on here. If you dig the information wants to do a little more of it, patreon.com slash awesomecast. So, the state of... So- what if, if you were to give one sentence about the state of social media after 2020, what would it be? <laughs> Oh, I think you're muted. (laughs) You're the only person. You're Um, still muting. I know. Um, I think, uh, so you, you, we started this conversation and then we kind of continued today. Like, what are we talking about? And I messaged you and you were like the state of social media. And I I literally Googled the dumpster fire (laughs) gift that I was going to send you in response. Because I feel like it's it's been a a rough one this year. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. If nothing else, like uh, it's really kind of revealed a lot about what can happen with social media. Right. And and and, uh, um, when when things are in distress, what can happen? I I, I think we found out two things uh, that, wow, it could be a huge crap show on social media. And also, wow, we have this amazing tool in social media to connect with people that we really kind of took for granted, I feel like, for a long time. And it really united us and, and gave a lot of us a creative output, you know, a place to be creative, you know, when we're stuck at home and connect with our friends and family. So I think we saw really both sides to very exaggerated of social media this year. It has. It, it, and I've always, you know, because I always have this with the mindfulness because a lot of it is like, hey, you don't have to be on social media. So if, if it, if it, if we just had a, I just had a conversation with somebody last night, they were sharing some stuff that were there, that were of an account that were really kind of pissing them off. And I'm like, you don't have to follow them, unfollow them, block them. Like you don't need that in your life. And, and if that's what you want your social media to be kind of a safe place, that's what you can do with it. Even on the big ones that supposedly, that, you know, uh, there's this podcast I listen to where somebody just says Twitter's a dumpster fire. And it's like, well, and, and, and literally the per- other person on the show is like, I have a very nice feed. I don't know what you're doing out there, you know, and that's personally curated. You don't need all your friends. You don't need all your family if that's a problem and a stress point for you. I, I guess is my mindfulness message for this on social media. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be on six different social media accounts. You really don't. Like, like 
business people and you have other reasons to, but you as a person really do not need to be on all this stuff. But if it's something that you can get an advantage out of and, and it brings you joy, please do. And, and that's what we're here to kind of discuss today. Right, Katie? Yeah. And uh, I'm just going to touch on this real quick because we could totally just deep dive on this topic. But I think a lot of us who are, are used to being able-bodied folks who can leave the house and do whatever they want, we had an experience of what a lot of disabled folks deal with on the regular. And we learned how social media, you know, was able to connect us and how important social media was for connecting us. And then, you know, at some point, most of us are going to be able to venture out of the house. But this is still such a, social media is such an important tool for connecting people who aren't able to do that. And we have to I think that's something we it was like an eye opener for a lot of folks, too, of, well, we just get rid of social media. It's not that easy. It's it's it does a lot of good. It doesn't necessarily have to be used for evil. I think exactly. it's the best way of putting it. Exactly. So let's get into like, get, let's get in the weeds on a little bit of that. One of the big changes, of course, over this, because of all the discussions that have happened, obviously, um, there's been kind of a light shined on all the platforms um, and those discussions. I mean, everything from, uh, 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 you know, Mark Zuckerberg on the Hill, uh, uh, you know, being, being grilled by, by, by senators and congressmen and, and, and everything, uh, to to policy changes, to to backlashes, to uh, uh, things like that. Uh, one of the one of the big changes, at least, and I think you know, a vast majority of people probably have Apple phones, and this is something that Android's been doing for a while. But Apple's saying, "Hey, look, this is what's doing. We're not going to hide it anymore." Yeah, we just talked. To, you just pointed this out to me this morning about the fact if you go into the iPhone and go into the App Store. You can look and, and find the privacy policy of any of the apps now. Right. Like it's a, you, it has to be right there. And oh my gosh, like I have never, I mean, usually when you're looking for a privacy policy for a place like Facebook is a great example of this, it takes a little bit of digging. Yeah. Now it's much easier because they have to be, because there has to be that level of transparency. And it's great to be able to just go in there. And any app that you're about to download and go, hey, you know, how are you using my data? Like, what data are you collecting and having that right there for you? And we're showing that on the video, what that looks like in the app store. But for those that don't know, like, if you go into the app store for for the iPhone, go to the app that you want to. Like, I'm on Messenger now. I was on Facebook a moment. Go Snapchat, whatever you want. And, of course, I mean, you, it's, it's not right at the top. It's definitely not right at the top. But there's a lot of information on these pages. But if you scroll down past the comments, there is a, um, you know, for this, there's data linked to you um, um, for this. And it doesn't have, so that's interesting. So Messenger doesn't have as much listed um, because Facebook has data used to track you. And for this, it says, you know, contact info, identifiers, uh, other data. Of course, this is kind of a broad, you know, categorization. And this, you know, something with Sam listening, this could, this could change you. Like, what do they do after they get that information, of course? But then you have an idea. And if there's something, something in here where, where you don't feel comfortable, then don't download it. Like, very, very very plainly like if you you don't feel comfortable i know there's there's some new social media apps and i hear about things they collect and i'm just like no i'm not touching that you know that sounds a little mm -hmm. weird to me you know especially you know as you download other apps you know you're downloading all kinds of picture viewers and things like that this isn't just a social media thing hey i'm going to make a gift maker hey i'm going to make a i'm going to get this little video editor that does cool effects or something like a v like a thing that just does a vh or or what were the old what was the old thing the fart apps are those yeah. still around remember there was like a like a thousand <laughs> fart apps when 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 they could do the app store for the first time but <laughs> but but if you download you know that app that just does that one thing and you're like why are you collecting my financial information you know why are you collecting my contact information for this that's when you get now that pops up as a pop-up when you install something over on the android store so they're going a little bit a step forward but for mm -hmm. for iphone that has never been kind of on top of things in the same way no and i think the other thing that i've that i've appreciated with the iphone you know the updates has been whenever you give it permission to use your photos you know, if, if I want on Facebook and I want to share a photo, uh, whether or not I want to give it access to all my photos, specific photos, or no, none of my photos, um, because you have a lot of photos on your phone. And depending on what you're taking photos of, I mean, anybody, you, you might not even want pictures of your cat out there. 
you might not want to give access to all the photos and you want to keep it to a specific folder, especially if you're using it for business. Like you don't want to necessarily have, you know, I don't want to accidentally give it access to all my photos when I'm just, you know, wanting to post business pictures. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, you know, pictures of, of, of job sites, proprietary, proprietary info, things like that. Movie sets, you know, um, like that's, you know, we're not just talking about your, you know, if you happen to take some naughty photos or anything like that. Uh, but, but, it, you know, it's a bigger, it's a bigger topic. Right. So, uh, so, so, so that transparency is kind of out there. And, and again, like, I think, I think like, let you know, you know, Facebook is the one that everybody's talking about. But like I said, like, there are a lot of tools, you know, like that news feed does not have to be everything. And especially, and I'm hoping a lot of people discovered, uh, especially going into the election, like there's a lot of like, hey, you know, we can move this out of, we can snooze this, we can hide this, we can see less of this. I don't even, I don't even want to see this ad for this company because it's a company that I don't want to support, right? Mm-hmm. Like those tools are in there. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I think I think Twitter gets the award for coming out with that particular option, the earliest of being able to mute certain words or mute certain people. Mm-hmm. And because there's points, I mean, even if you want to avoid show spoilers, you could mute, you know, Mandalorian for a while. So it didn't show up in your Twitter feed, but it might still show up in there, but it might be able to keep that stuff out of your feed, which is really, really nice. And I do appreciate that Facebook has finally kind of caught up with that in being able to mute people and, you know, maybe for 30 days and maybe you realize that you're, not having this particular business or person on your feed makes your feed enriches your feed. So then you get rid of them. Because <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've had those moments where I'm like, oh, wow, this has been nice. And then uh, suddenly somebody pops back in and I'm like, nope, nope, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> but I think definitely Twitter gets the, um, the, I feel like this would be like a trophy, like, thank you, <laughs> the award for that one. And that option. <laughs> Which one's helped my mindfulness tools. Absolutely. Yeah. And even like I said, ads I've, I've done too. Because uh, somebody said, hey, if I unfollow ads, you know, then I won't see as many, like, you know, ads I don't want. Like, I mean, here's an ad for Mountain Dew Game Fuel, but I don't have any p- problem with that. But there's, like, a why am I seeing this? You can hide the ad, and then you won't get to see, see much. Like, there was a there's a company that was being advertised to me um, not too long ago that, uh, just the other day, where I was like, I, I don't want, like, I don't like that company's policies, you know. Uh, um, and And I don't want that in my feed at all. You know, I'm not going to go there and participate. I'm not going to be a part of that. Like, it shouldn't be in my feed. So, and and that's, you know, good. Then that's one less thing you get to. If you're if you're going through social media and um, your your reaction is kind of like sighing in disgust, like you should you should really kind of consider what's on your social media. I think is 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 the yeah. one take on it. So, um, and yeah. I think. I think folks have finally started giving themselves permission to unfriend and unfollow Mm -hmm. people Mm -hmm. in, in their lives that there was a lot of guilt. I think with like, Oh, I I should be following this person because, you know, I went to high school with them or I'm friends with them or I'm family with them. And I, you know, I don't want to hurt their feelings. And I think a lot of people let go of that guilt. And, and I think I, on the other side of it too, I think a lot of people were like, you know what, so and so doesn't follow me. That's okay. Maybe they don't like what I'm putting out there, and that's fine. Yeah, doesn't mean we're not friends or family anymore. Absolutely, and that's that's why you very particularly separate your personal and your business uh, as far as things, which is the the biggest tip there for anybody doing that. If they're pages or things like that, um, I see I see people with businesses like posting very personal, kind of like about their day and stuff, and it's like, well, that's you know this should be this company, not you in this, you know, those kind of separations. Um, a big thing. We have a lot of conversations about as professional, with professional wrestlers, of course, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, about your brand and your vigil and and everything like that. Uh, I, I forgot the, where I was going to go with the next thing of this, but (laughs) um, (laughs) there's so much to talk about. I know there's so much to get into, uh, but, oh, oh, uh, and also I've seen, um, people, this is this is something that was happening around the summer where I would get messages, hey, do you know you follow this person and they did such and such. Um, I think mm-hmm. I think people need to be knowledgeable that, you know, again, a lot of people that have been around for a while f- have followed everybody. And if there is somebody that is on the do not follow list socially, that's not necessarily like, you know, 
a lot of people will follow people because they have a similar interest and have no idea the rest of them. And, and if mm-hmm. something comes out, you know, not everybody's going through and cleansing their, their friend list. Like, I don't even know how many friends I have on Facebook right now, right? And I'm not going to be like, okay, oh, no, I still follow that guy. That's no good. Maybe I muted that guy ages ago, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it, it, so I, I think, I think people need to understand, you know, it's much like an old story where uh, a good friend of mine, their uh, grandfather died, uh, several years ago and we hadn't heard from him for a while and realized we were unfriended and we're like, what happened here? And, uh, and they're like, well, you, you never said anything when my, when my grandfather died. I'm like, well, we never knew. And it's like, well, I posted on Facebook. I was like, well, that doesn't mean I see it. You know, mm-hmm. whether it be, you know, again, people do not see everything on the Facebook feed, period. Nobody's going mm-hmm. to, no, I'm going to say nobody, but most people are not going to your profile to see what you've posted, which is the one of the only ways. There are other ways you can do things with the feed. You, you, there's some customization. Look into customizing mm-hmm. your news feed. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and, and you can put those people that you really care about. Like if you want to put all of your family on a particular list. Yes. You know, on Facebook and you just want to see that feed with all your family. You want to make sure you're keeping up with all of them, you know, or if you have a particular circle of friends that you're like, I don't want to miss their updates. Yes. Make sure you do that. And because I think it's true, like you miss so much in your feed, like you have thousands of friends. And I think and everybody says this. Oh, I think I see the same five people every time in my Facebook feed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's is- the most active. Like I just joined a group and it's like invading my feed, <laughs> you know, from yesterday. And I'm just like, oh, I, get- I need to tone this down. I don't need every other thing being somebody going off in this group about wrestling, you know, uh, so or TikTok or whatever the case may be, you know. So, so that's 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 kind of ways to kind of, um, you know, I- I'm really big again, just that that mindfulness of of how we're using those. And who you have followed, and again, just it, it's okay to mute, block, unfollow, and and in in cases where it's appropriate, report if it's really mm-hmm. offensive. There's a button for that. Click that little. And, mm-hmm. and people are and maybe we should go down to if you have a question about that, uh, you should know that those three little dots on every post in the upper right that's your that's your ticket to that stuff. You can go from well, these are, these are my own posts. That's so not going to do the same thing. So. But let's say, uh, oh, okay, here, Dan over a comic book pit. This swordfish is really offensive to me. So I <laughs> the three times. <laughs> and you got everything. Again, snooze him for 30 days, unfollow him, hide the post, uh, or I can add him the favorites so I see everything. You know, this is going to prioritize this post in my news feed. Um, you, can, you can find support or report the post if you have a, you know, think there's an issue with the post, you know, whether it be in, uh, uh, offensive or false or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, if you have, if you if you have some sort of issue with that, so that's enough about Facebook. There's a lot of other stuff out there. Twitter. There's there's just one more thing I want to cover with Facebook because it, this is driving me bonkers, and this is like a huge tip for anyone who uses Facebook. If there's a difference between your Facebook account being hacked and somebody who's created a duplicate Facebook account using your information, mm. like you will see this, and I see this a lot with folks will be like, hey. If you get a friend with request from me, I, it's not me because I've been hacked. You not that you haven't necessarily been hacked. Where it's definitely if you if if someone tells you that you you sent a a friend request and they thought well I thought we were already friends. It doesn't necessarily mean you were hacked. They took the information that you have out there publicly, spoofed an account, which is essentially created a second Facebook account using like your photo, maybe a little bit of your information. They start friending people, you know. And then it cascades, you know, oh, you're friends with Sorg, so you might be, you know, maybe Katie got a new account, and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. But it doesn't necessarily mean you've been hacked. I did that. With that being said, like I said, change your password if you feel any sort of like there's, you know, if it's been a while, if you feel like your data has been compromised, definitely change your password. But it doesn't necessarily mean that your page was hacked. And if you get a friend request, for example, if I get a friend request from a Michael Sorg, and I'm like, hmm, I'm already friends with Michael Sorg. Feel free to message that friend, message them, say, hey, I just got a friend request from you. I'm not sure if this is you. Your Michael Sword will say, hey, that's not me. I didn't create another pit post or another page. You can report that other page as essentially impersonating your friend. So it'll, Facebook will ask you, you know, who is this page impersonating? And then you tag Michael Sorg and Facebook will say, thank you for this report. We'll contact Michael Sorg and we'll look into this. And most time that other page goes away pretty quickly. Because they realize that it's just somebody just making a copycat page. 
So don't feel like, you know, I see a lot of like people freaking out and going, oh my gosh, my, you know, my page has been hacked or, oh my gosh, um, it's sending, you know, posting a thousand messages of like sending or posting on your friend's page going, oh my gosh, did you know this? Did you know this? Take the, the, the couple seconds, go on the page, say that it's not so-and-so, you know, it's an impersonation and uh, Facebook will get that taken care of. There you go. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> I, I've seen oh, that a lot, good. especially lately. Mm-hmm. And I haven't seen it. I haven't noticed it, Ellie. It's that we, sometimes there's like people posting sunglass ads on on groups that we have mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So you're like, wait, that's not you. Yeah, you? yeah. I was like, why are you are you a are you a sunglasses connoisseur in the middle of winter all of a sudden? Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, we should also say never click on links you get from folks and messages if you don't know what that link is. That's always huge, though. Too. That's that 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 still goes across mm-hmm. the board. Don't feel bad about asking your friend, what is this link that you have sent me? It's totally okay. It's not being rude. I uh, also, I, since we're on it, I, I guess a little bit, a, a quick tip for this, this mostly a lot, of, a lot applies to Facebook, but it really kind of applies across the board. Uh, I've been using a service called NewsGuard. So again, you know, we talk about false information and things out there. Um, it, it will vet the source. Uh, and if you have the, the browser extension in Chrome or Firefox, You'll get a little kind of marker by everything that's a link out. That's a news article for the most part. And it'll let you know, like, hey, this is a trusted source. Hey, this is not a trusted source. You know, and they'll they, and they have criteria, like, you know, good journalism criteria about how they they follow up and retract and 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 talk about who the who the source is and everything like that. Um, it's called NewsGuard. It's like three bucks a month. Um, the app on your phone, you can just like copy and paste a, a website into it, like, you know, from your share or something like that. Um, but it's very helpful if you are seeing a lot of crazy stuff out there on your social media. So just to, to inform, because some people are sharing and don't know, like literally, yeah. you know, don't know. Like, I don't know how many times I'd be like, hey, I don't think this is right. You know, I don't t- say, I, you know, one big thing for me is I don't say you're an idiot for posting this or anything like that. It's like, hey, I don't think this is right. And this might be why. And maybe you like another source um, mm-hmm. for something like that. That's been my process. It's mostly worked out pretty well. But, you know. You know, that that's that's there. Um, Twitter. Katie, yes. what the hell is a fleet? <laughs> a fleet. It's essentially if you use Instagram, it's a story. Oh <laughs> but, boy. Uh, I know. It's it's a lot of this it, it's a lot of social media platforms, especially the big ones, are trying to take the best features of other social media platforms and then working it into their platform. Which, if it works for somebody else, then you want to keep people within your own particular app. So you're going to add those things that other people like. And other, you know, people like Instagram stories, you know, quick little things uh, that they can watch or pictures or text or whatever. And, um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's a fleet, which is an interesting name. I'm not sure where that name came from. <laughs> it's fleeting. Honest, it's, ever- it's, it's fleeting because it's oh. 24 hours. It's, it's, it's a ephemeral thing. Which is what we love because of Snapchat and TikTok and everything. I guess TikTok's not really that ephemeral, but um, right? I mean, that, that, that's yeah, why that's I, I took it, it for. <laughs> so. You're probably right. That's perfect. Um, but yes, so now you can do a fleet, which is essentially in the nice thing about fleets is you tag people in it, mm-hmm. and you know if you have people in there and the people get the notification, we realize there's no refleet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're trying to figure out what, because we had a conversation like, what happens when I tag you in this? Because I, I know, you know, the other things you get a tag and you can sh- reshare and things like that, but there's nothing really to do with it. Mm-mm. No refleets. <laughs> I, I think the only real function is if you're on with, if you're on one, like, I think you can message the person based on it or something. Mm-hmm. Wait, 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 where is that function? Like, where, where, I, what do I even like a fleet? Like, I don't know what <laughs> happens with it. Like, all I have is mute and report, actually. But, um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Just, there's, there's, not much, there's not much to do besides watch a fleet. Um, one of the issues with fleets is you can tag people that may have blocked you. I don't know if they've mm. corrected that issue, but that out of the gate, that was one of the issues that people were pointing out that I could block you, but then you still tag me in your fleets and I'll see it. Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, it's, should I be, you know, Hey, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Snapchat, you know, say, should I bother with fleets? I think it depends on where your audience is. Like Mm -hmm. if, if 
you know, looking at this from a business, if most of your audience is on Twitter, yes, you should definitely continue. You should do fleet because, because you, your audience will see it. Yeah, because you're, you, it shows up right at the top. So, mm -hmm. so if you if you follow us on Awesome Cast, you may notice we've been having a lot of clips, but which also means that on the top of Twitter, because I don't think you can turn this off anywhere on your app. Mm -hmm. This is on the phone. I, I don't even think I saw it much on the on the iPad version of it or the desktop. This is mostly just on the iPhone. I'm sure it'll roll out in some fashion if they keep up with it. But but you know, hey, WWE keeps posting stuff, so they're going to be on the top, and now they're always um, you know that awareness factor. Right, all your all your followers like will will continue to get more and more stuff as you keep using it, right? Yeah. So so then the, yeah, so if you're like if you're on there, if most of your friends are on there, you know, you keep using Fleet definitely. Um, but as far as I I don't use Fleet because I just don't have as many. I I don't know. I maybe I I should try it more and see if more of my friends will end up watching it because uh, I know where most of my friends are getting the information that I about me. Yeah. And a, lo a lot of times I will place things in Instagram stories because Instagram does not do a very good job of presenting your your po posts to a very wide audience or chronologically. But that's a different story altogether. So I know a lot of times I'll post things in my Instagram or Facebook stories because more people will see that than will see my actual posts. Yep. So the same thing goes with Twitter, I bet. I think now that I think that now that I've worked my way back, um, tweets only live with they figure like 20, 25 minutes and then it's gone. If you haven't seen it, if someone hasn't seen it at that point, they're most likely not going to see it. Uh, well, yes, but doesn't it um if there's reactions to it, like I I, mm -hmm. I see a lot of tweets from like the day before if there's been a lot of mm -hmm. like likes and comments on it. So I mean that really becomes like a Facebook thing. Like they took away the idea that Twitter is like a thing that just kind of goes away, right? Mm -hmm. um, tweets were initially kind of fleeting because it was like if you don't see it in your feed, so we we kept pushing the feed, pushing the feed. Um, but now it's 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 like Facebook where it's this algorithm thing, right? Mm -hmm. The the other thing is is um, you can send tweets to a fleet. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get the share button, you'll see. You know, there is a there is a share of fleet and it'll, it'll represent that there. And it's another way, I, I, you know, probably like you're kind of sending posts to, to stories and things, Katie. Right. Where now mm -hmm. now you that is at the top of the page. And you're like, oh, hey, you know, uh, awesome. Yeah, sort of posted something. And then it's just like a tweet and you, you can follow through from there. It's just kind of another it's just another way to, 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 to get it in front of people, I guess. And again, I can't really mm -hmm. speak to how many people are using. It. I haven't seen a lot of response to it yet myself um but th that may change over time so mm -hmm. i don't know it's something to play around with see what happens for you or just like two seconds throw it up there and could be in front of my more eyeballs anything else big with twitter that's been happening over the last you know we talked a little bit about like their um settings for for muting and and kind of calling your your uh, uh feed and everything i think a, a twitter has started to do a better job at uh, putting information at the bottom of tweets if it's mm -hmm. not necessarily if they're if they're unsure if it's true mm -hmm. um, you'll see a lot more and especially with COVID-19 you might see something that this involves COVID-19 mm -hmm. um, but I, 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 they've kind of they haven't gone the whole way I don't think Twitter is afraid to make the jump to formally you know suspend certain accounts uh, big accounts because, you know, that gets a lot of eyes on Twitter, probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is, is, it, I mean, as a company, it makes sense for them to not suspend big accounts that get a lot of views because you want eyes on your, your platform. But so they've added these little things to the bottom that this information might not be true. Or um, so they haven't quite made the jump. They're kind of like eh, doing the bare minimum of some of this stuff. But at least they're doing more than they did before, I guess. Right. And it does feel like, I mean, that's ramping up. And I think, I think they're waiting for certain situations to change to, to do something about that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's interesting to see them, you know, kind of stepping up and, 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 you know, getting a lot of flack for it, obviously um, for it. And, and plus it becomes uh, Facebook, all these platforms have trouble. If you're, if you're blocking one thing, but not another, like that's always going to come under fire. So mm -hmm. um, I think I've seen more ads on Twitter my Twitter stream. Oh yeah. Like when I, when I look at my feed, I think I've seen more ads than I have before mm -hmm. more promoted tweets, uh, which gets a little confusing sometimes, especially when they look like things that and then I'm like, wait a minute, this is no, I don't actually follow these people. 
Um, so from that, uh, let's 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 dig into some of these other social medias that the kids might be doing. Well, first Instagram, which is really just an extension of Facebook. Katie, I'm having trouble kind of I, I I'm I'm just getting on the bandwagon for reels. And I'm getting really mad at Instagram because I keep changing it and the button <laughs> to post became the button for reels. And like it used to be like right in the middle, you hit the you hit the thing in the middle, and now it's just like I'm uh, somebody's twerking in front of a dog. I don't know what's going on here. I'm supposed to be posting my 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 cool picture, and and this is what's happening now. What what what's ha- what is happening? <laughs> Instagram <laughs> right now. So just, one of the recent upgrades of in well updates of Instagram, I don't want to say upgrade because I think it's really bothersome. Uh, mm. Is like having to find at the top this little plus sign next to Instagram. Which then allows you to, oh, there's my post story reels live. So my options oh. are now under this plus sign at the top. Oh, wait, wait, it's there? Here, I don't even yeah. know. No, I don't I don't have that. Katie, I don't have that. I I have yeah, to slide true. left. I have to slide left to get my options. What what do you Oh, there is a little plus up there. Look at that. Yeah, next next to your notifications, which is now a heart at the top when it used to be at the bottom, which is also I, I've been I've been sliding to I've been sliding left. And getting all my options, which of course start with, well, I think they start with stories. If I do that, yeah, they start with yeah. stories, and then I like okay, and then I have to go over to the post, and then now we have reels. So reels is like was much like stories look a lot like what Snapchat was doing, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we all got used to it. Like reels is TikTok, basically. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. It is. And most people I'm who are doing both are using the same videos in both places mm-hmm. because they look very much the same. Yes. So so the question is, the question that I battle with, <laughs> what should be a story versus a post versus a reel? Versus I, I think... versus, versus IGTV maybe? I think IGTV <laughs> kind of makes the decision for you, doesn't it? Yeah, that's long form. Yes. That's anything over 60 seconds, you're going to be over on IGTV. I mean, there are apps that will break up things in story. Yeah. And your story to break it up into little boop, boop, boop. But it doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't seem to play as, I, people tend to tap out at a certain point. Yes. If your story goes too long. You're not expecting it's, a three minute video when you're sitting in stories that everything like caps out at 15 seconds, right? So yeah, like, like, it, it's like, done. yeah, it's like, it's supposed to be a quick thing. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think, I think it depends on what, what kind of what content are you creating? Are you creating something where you need more than the first five, ten seconds to capture someone's attention? Mm-hmm. Like that is more of reels. That's more of, I guess, even a post. But with the stories, you have to be ready to capture somebody's like attention right away. Or they have to really like you, which you as far as like a business. Mm-hmm. If you were looking at it from a business standpoint, you have to be able to catch someone's attention like right away or they're flipping. Because it's so easy just to go, okay, I'm tired of this. Flip, flip, flip. flip, flip, flip. You know what I mean? It's so simple to do it that people aren't going to hesitate when it's time to, you know, like, ah, this is taking too long to get into the story. This is taking yeah. too long to get to what you're talking about. Yeah. So, and Reels is fun for adding songs like on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so, one thing I, I've seen, because, you know, we're, you know, we, we, we put, you know, we're putting our clips out and everything, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if you post, if you're kind of like, have a question about it you know okay i'm gonna put it on story i'm gonna put it on a post i won't put it on reels because the people that because not everybody i literally have never really been in reels like it just doesn't happen <laughs> you know it's not part of my 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 not not workflow but like you know uh app flow i guess uh, it, when, when you're in there until they put that button in there and i hit it by accident um but and and, and this is gonna be different because i still have accounts like i still have the plus at the bottom over on the awesome cast account for instance right so so mm-hmm. like it doesn't be the same as my other accounts. <laughs> it's nuts uh, because they're doing these slow rollout things. Um, but uh, one thing I noticed is Reels will post uh, in IGTVs too. And again, that's anything over. It. And you'll get an option when you post a video, you just cut it off at 60 and be an Instagram video or be an IGTV video. And I don't know what that does to your algorithm and how many people see it, to be quite honest. But, um, but if you post Reels, it can say show on your grid which means that reel will now show up just like a post. And I've seen it in timelines as well afterwards um, without doing a separate post. 
So now that becomes like you've you've kind of settled both those places. There's a lot of thinking for something that started as a very simple picture posting app. Yeah, <laughs> I've noticed. It really, it really does. And I think um, because Instagram is trying to push reels so hard, yes, um, putting yourself out on reels shows up more often. It seems in the search when mm -hmm. you're searching for something, and mm -hmm. they're really working hard at curating reels for you, really hard. Because if you hit that little reels button, most of my videos are cats and dog videos. <laughs> <laughs> if you, um, like, She's gonna watch us. It, it, and that's the general rule of thumb that we've kind of had around here too, is, is, uh, if there's a new feature, figure it out early, even if it doesn't last long, because that platform is going to push that new feature. Right. Yep. And that's an opportunity to, if you're the, one of the first ones to figure out how to utilize that feature, you get some new eyeballs or more eyeballs to, for whatever the thing you're trying to do, you know, bring it to our podcast, bring, bring it to your business, whatever the case may be. Like, that's always a, oh no, there's a new thing. It's like, why am I doing fleets? Not because I, not because, you know, I want to do fleets, but because it's like, well, this is a new thing. Twitter's going to put this in front of a lot of people. It does satisfy this need. You know, then it is something like that. But with that, also, only, you know, try not to overextend. <laughs> so, we're getting a little heady. You should see my social media folder. <laughs> so, <laughs> all the things and stuff. But I think I, I like the thing I do like about Reels is it does serve me content that other people will like. And it's easy to like just forward it into a friend in a message. Oh, okay. I'm like, I like cat videos. So, like, and I have friends that like cat videos or any sort of animal videos. And then I'm like, oh, this is hilarious. I just hit the little, looks like a paper airplane. And then I'm selecting the friends I want to send it to. And there you go. And it's nice because it sends it separately. So you don't have to feel like you're sending out a big group text because that's annoying to a lot of people, including myself when you get into these huge group texts. But, um, and then it also gives you the option to add the reel to your story. So then you're sharing it with your friends anyways. So, so here's a question because I'm on your feed. I'm trying to figure this out. How do I get to your reels? I don't have any reels, so you, that probably is why. Oh, you, you just don't share see. out from other people. Okay, mm -hmm. I now I'm curious because yeah. I, I don't know other than it kind of showing up where you would do. Where would you kind of find reels? Now I know we're doing reels lately on Awesome Cast, so I'm going to go over to that that uh, uh, feed over there. This is educational. Um, yeah, see, okay. you'll see. If, I'm looking on Michael Sorg's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then you'll notice that you have your grid, your reels, your Instagram TV, and then there simply the the tag. I only have three of those little icons right. because I don't, I haven't done any reels. You haven't posted any, so so yeah, mm -hmm. you'll go to reels and you'll see kind of the verticals, the vertical videos we've been doing, and then IGTV will be kind of the long form versions that we've been doing. And those are like you know like you know three or four minute kind of clips of an entire section of something we talked about, like you know like like Chilla talking about the uh, hackboard. Intel hack for it a few weeks ago here. That's like uh, probably a little long. And I don't know a lot of people watch those long videos on Instagram. So I don't know how, how well you want to prioritize it. But for me, it's just kind of in my workflow. So, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, and it's also interesting because if you go to the search function, I'm in my account. And I like seeing that uh, the um, one of our reels for the AirPods Max from engraving option from a few weeks ago is now popping up in there as well. And this is like a lot of, I think, top reels and things like that i don't know if that got a lot i'm trying to find my stats on there oh there's no stats because i'm not in the account but you get the idea um snapchat mm -hmm. let's talk about snapchat i have recently re-downloaded snapchat because again just kind of getting the workflow and making sure we have something there um there, there's a lot more buttons than i remembered <laughs> in this thing it <laughs> yeah. took me a minute to get back into it and it's been notorious for like if you don't know how to get into Snapchat. It, it, before it was nothing. It was just you swipe swipe a certain way to get features, right? Mm -hmm. And now we actually do have buttons at the bottom here um, for for your chats and your and your your Snap Maps and and uh, and, and things like that. Your 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 stories. Um, let's see what we got here. And apparently I'm in the spotlight now. Um, and there's I don't know what's they're doing like a Christmas dance. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening right now, but. <laughs> So what, what am I concerned with Snapchat? Like, cause Snapchat to me has always been, you send a video to somebody and it disappears. How do I get Snapchat in front of people that are not my friends? Not your friends. 
Um, so you can check, you can, when you post a snap, you can decide like who sees it. Mm-hmm. And if I don't want to post a snap, I'm taking a photo of myself and your send to options are now, you know, my story or my story only friends. So you have the option of just sending it and putting it in front of your friends, or you can send it, you know, essentially to everybody to be able to see it. Uh, recent folks, um, also the snap map. So you could send it to the map. And then folks will be able to see it if they're in the area. I, I like so snap maps. I want to talk about that really, really quick because um, you it does. You do have to go into the settings and put yourself where you want to show up on the map. Like you if you don't just want your friends to be able to see you do that. Um, if you want friends except for certain people, that's another option on there. Like if you have. Oh gosh, if if you know, if we were going out and hanging out and you had that one friend that likes to stalk where you're going and show up randomly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, maybe you want, don't want them to see where your location is or only certain friends. Like if you only want certain friends to be able to see, uh, that's the one I use more often is the only friends or um so then I could pick people that I don't mind where they know where I'm at because it's the location is pretty spot on. Yeah. Like when you were on, you know, when you submit a snap, it's very um, like I am. I am right at the studio. I'm standing on top of the studio here. Oop, apparently I went went to sleep over here. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it shows it shows my little animated me like right on top of the studio. Pretty good here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it's very, very good at like knowing your location. Mm. Uh, you can also select a ghost mode where nobody can see where you're at on the snap map, which is all fine. Like this is all fine. If you want more people to discover your content, you're going to have to put more information out there as Mm. like the same thing with any other social media app is like, you're going to have to be a little bit more comfortable with putting information out there. So Um, so I, I'm sorry, is this automatically updating as I, as I travel around or is this only posting when I post a snap? Only posting when you post a snap. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I have it uh, snapped from, or when you're opening snap, I'm sorry, I take that back. When you open Snapchat, it moves your location to your latest location. Okay, so Sorry, it's not. It's that's not, what I meant. It's not sitting here uh, automatically tracking me. Hold on, let me check the app store. <laughs> See what it lists on <laughs> yeah, here, I mean, right? Because we can strange. do that now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. So. So. Okay. So that 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 was a big question for me because I wasn't sure what triggered that situation. Yeah. So if you're worried when about you that, mm-hmm, when you open the app and it's not doing the background refresh or anything like that, so uh, that's good. That's good to know. Good enough for you if you're concerned about your privacy while you're doing this. So it's good. So so snap map is great for either figuring out you know what your friends are up to. Yay, look at my friends. I, I enjoy looking at the map and seeing which friends are far away. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also you'll notice different colors on your map, and the red means there's a lot of activity. It's like kind of like red, yellow. You know, there's a different color coordination thing happening here. But red means a lot of activity in a certain area. Mm-hmm. Like you'll see it's it's a little bit darker blue than a green, than a yellow, than a red. Um, but that's telling you there's a lot of snaps in that area. And you can see it's kind of fun sometimes to go and see like what in the world's happening in the Magic Kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. kind of obvious. But there's other ones that are in other areas. You know, maybe there's newsworthy areas that things are happening. And you're able to go in and see snaps that are submitted from that area. And it, you can kind of get a bird, you know, like on the ground view of a lot of things that are happening in real time or within like within 24 hours but pretty much as they're being posted yeah so if you if uh, you know if uh light up night was happening here in pittsburgh for instance it wasn't this year uh but if 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 that was happening you could go through see you know see downtown and then click everybody's and see everybody's snaps there or if there is um you know some sort of protest happening you'll see you can go on the map see where the protest is you'll see the you know, there should be a lot of people snapping from there, obviously, you know, because everybody's so social media these days. Um, so you'll, you'll be able to see like what, you know, a nice little highlight reel basically of everybody, uh, everybody's videos from there. So, which is mm-hmm. kind of a nice thing. That was, a, I know that was something you were really excited about when they uh, uh, first launched it. Yeah. I, I just, I think it's, it's really, really cool to be able to see like what's going on in certain areas from people's perspectives. And see what they're taking snaps of, and see what's going on. And I, 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 it's interesting. It's kind of probably weirdly stalkerish. I don't know. But <laughs> these, uh, but some of these, some of these face things are, are really weird now. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. So yeah, when you're taking a photo, um, it's a huge year for AR on Snapchat. Huge year for companies with AR on Snapchat. 
as Sorg is making photos or faces. It's really funny because I get to see his actual face as he's making these faces on the app. <laughs> But there was a big year for companies using AR on Snapchat where you could, you know, essentially put maybe your, you know, anything to do with your company as a snap, you know, an AR filter and, you know, or a game. You can incorporate certain games depending on how much money you're willing to spend on your um, Snapchat uh, filter. Uh, and anybody can do a Snapchat filter, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um depending on how i'm looking at these now i haven't looked at these in a while these are funny uh like state farm has a huge one right now but um it turns me into a football you, -hee. nice <laughs> and kick and uh, but you could do a, an ar snapchat filter uh for you know any size like if you want to you have a big event you know coming up next year or <laughs> Maybe if you, you know, it'll do, but you just kind of essentially you select a grid or an area that you want your Snapchat filter to be available in. And people within that area would be able to access that particular Snapchat filter. But like I said, it's just, just willing, how much you're willing to spend yeah. Yeah. on your, you know, to get your filter out there. Yeah, I think we've played, and people, we, we played with this with, uh, I think, PodCamp back in the day with the geofencing and everything. And maybe a wrestling mm -hmm. show we did once as well. I have a pigeon on my head. You can't see it, though. <laughs> those, um, those a pigeon. Yeah, and I know I've seen ones. I can't remember if they were on, probably on Instagram, uh, where they would have something pointed at somebody's head and it would follow their head, and then but it would pop mm -hmm. up, like, how they're feeling or something, you know, uh, and they would kind of... What kind of potato it. are you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, But you can create things like, like, you can create basic Snapchat filters and submit them. Mm -hmm. to go into and then you could download certain ones when you're in the app too like if you're you're you know just kind of going through things and you're like oh i really like this one with the cat on my head um <laughs> my cat on my head <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is but what it, this is what all the power in your pocket is really for mm -hmm. yep to put animals on your head and i don't i also want to point out i don't have a new phone i have a i have an iphone 8 plus um it doesn't have face id or anything any of the the new fangled you know, cameras or, or IRs or anything that, that, that you have mm -hmm. on the necks uh, and above, but, um, but, it, and it's still doing this, you know, it's still able to do this. So, you know, it's just, what's well, even recognizing pets. Yeah. Oh yeah. And pet faces. Oh yeah. There's some filters that recognize pet faces, which is fun. <laughs> oh yeah. This is fun. This is, this is, this is what this is for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't, I don't, I don't think I ever get tired of watching people watch certain shows and putting Snapchat filters on those, and, <laughs> and then they share them to whatever platform. Yeah, I absolutely. think they're really funny, especially wrestlers when they do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's talk about TikTok. Of course, uh, TikTok. it doesn't seem like it's going away. I know it was a little bit of controversy a few months ago about that, and uh, and uh, should we be concerned about the app and its or its country of origin? I don't believe so. Like I, I think. I mean, I could be totally wrong in the future, so don't put this. You know, don't, and we are not security experts by any means. I just want to say no. this is anecdotal. It's um, but there's a lot of apps that are definitely created outside the country that I'm sure a lot of folks are using right now, and mm -hmm. they don't even realize it because it's not uh, something that's really put to the forefront. But it's not usually pushed to the forefront. Yeah. The origin of a country, uh, uh, quite like TikTok. Do you know where Waze originated from? Um, it was in the Middle East, if I'm correct. I believe as an Israeli company. Now it's, yeah. of course, it got purchased by Google. But yeah, it was from Israel. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because at one point, um, I remember we talked about it on the show on AwesomeCast the one time that if you use Waze in that area, there are places where they tell you it's not safe to go. Mm -hmm. Because if there's... Um, like um oh i forget one like if maybe there was it was a dangerous area um in regards to like certain kinds of checkpoints or um that kind of thing that we're thankfully we don't you know gratefully we don't have to um that they don't show up on our ways maps in the u.s um but yeah so yeah it's it's it's, it's usually not pushed to the forefront unless there's a particular reason yeah and um i think tiktok was just one of the ones that kind of caught some folks eyes of being you know from that particular but i like i said i'm not a security you said i'm not a security expert whatsoever uh but yeah tiktok 
it's not going away, I don't think, even though uh, some folks have wanted it to go away. It's not going anywhere for a while because it's become incredibly popular, especially over the last few months. Absolutely. So it, it is mostly, you know, we were talking about reels, of course, but it's kind of that same function. Um, it's, it's, you know, you just kind of scroll up and scroll through. It's kind of a vertical thing. And there's not a lot. It's not, it, it's still just kind of one content feed for the most part, other than following it for you, but the same kind of content. It's not as, uh, you know, what the heck are we connected with? Um, mm -hmm. You know, like, like Instagram is like, oh, wait, which of these three, four or five ways do I, I need to post something? So, um, so it, it, it's, I want to say it's simplistic in that, but it, it's really focused, mm -hmm. I think is the idea. And then you, we talked about, um, you know, as of this recording, the last, the last bit, you know, you were talking about, this is probably, you can do a lot in, in some of those other ones we were talking about, but this is probably the, um, app with the most interesting suite of editing tools yeah. built in. So you go in here, you can add music to a lot of things. Um, it's been a lot of, and then edit where that music starts. So you can like, hey, right when they say this is when I want this to pop up. Um, you can, you can, uh, you know, let's see, let me get out of music here. But, uh, you know, add text, add stickers, effects, things like that. Uh, you know, edit several things together. You can respond to other videos. Uh, you know, th this is really a really robust situation here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I think it's giving folks a real chance to play with video editing tools, mm -hmm. which is great. And like seeing the transitions is phenomenal. Some of those folks that do transitions, and when I say when a transition is essentially they they might change their hat and it makes it look like that they drop. Well, the, one of the we'll do one of the ones that a lot of people have seen where they they're sitting there and then they drop a different shoe, and then when that shoe hits, looks like it hits their foot. Their, cha their whole outfit changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been a big one, a big trend. Uh, you'll see, hear a lot with TikTok, I think, with the word trend more often than you will other um, social media accounts now or platforms now. I think when you think of trend, a lot of people think of TikTok because there have been so many different trends that just come and go. And, you know, an influencer will start one. Someone will randomly, you know, start one accidentally without even trying. Uh, you can reuse sounds from other videos that people are sharing uh, that you could, you know, make your own take on it. And it's sometimes it's a lot of fun. There's a couple that I follow. There's one um, that I like to follow where he reenacts, he dresses up and reenacts movies from like pretty women, like certain scenes from those movies. And it's so fun because they use the audio from those movies and, you know, mm -hmm. but it's, 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 so it's, I think it's like for a lot of folks getting to play with um, video editing tools that they never they haven't been able to get their hands on because they cost so much money. You're able to go into TikTok and really get a because you edit. A, I can't even imagine how many videos you've edited, and you know that the more you edit, the better you you become at this, and Absolutely. you develop a feel for it. Yep, yep. It's it's using the tool no matter what it is. You know, I, I, I get mm -hmm. slack for for being a Final Cut Pro person, and they're like, you should use Premiere. I was like, well, I, I'm probably just as robust on Final Cut as somebody on that's been on Premiere for the last mm -hmm. 15 years, right? Um, and well, I'm I think even just your your feel for it. Yeah, your yeah. feel for when, when you cut, when the, the video should transition, mm -hmm. and just you, not everybody has that skill, but you've, you've been doing it for so long that you can yeah. look at something and be like, okay, this is right. where we need to do this and this. And now there's a lot of amateur video editors out there using these tools and figuring those things out. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what's really, really, you know, democratized the whole idea. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's you know not necessarily a replacement. It's, it's, a, it's a different format. It's just like, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've had Rob Johnston on um, that was a, who was who was a, 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 a sponsored Divine Star when that was mm -hmm. a thing. It was Twitter, twi Twitter, Twitter's answer to God. What were they mimicking at the time? <laughs> or was it that were, were they the first ones? I can't remember. Who knows? Right. Um, but we've had so many versions, like there's something called bite that just came out from the original vine yeah. and, and it was like a six second video and it was like, well, here's an eight second video on this platform, you know, was a big thing for a little bit there, <laughs> you know, but this is, this is, this is coming from that something bite size. I think it maxes out at, at 60 seconds and what mm -hmm. can you do with that in the app with the tool? Um, and you know, you can obviously edit and bring stuff in too, but a lot of people are just like, I'm in the app making things and that's, what's really cool. Um, I also see, I mentioned other feature. there is a live component, apparently. <laughs> yep. uh -huh. I forgot that was a thing. And on Instagram mm -hmm. and on all these things. We didn't even talk about that. 
but <laughs> pick a platform yeah, you and go live. live on every single social media platform out there now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Which is so, great. So I think, I think when you're talking about like TikTok and especially if you're not familiar with TikTok and you hear everybody just talking about it and you're like, what is this thing? Like, what do I do? And I, I, it's, you're able to follow certain people. The, you, you will heart videos that you like. Um, so there's a little heart option mm -hmm. and it curates, uh, it's called a, what a, the FYP or for you page. You'll hear a lot of people say for you page FYP. Um, and that they're really great at curating content that you want to see. Like I'm very impressed with what they put in front of my, on my for you page because I can see, okay, I got served this video because I like this, or I, I got this video because I like this. And I think it's really great. And, um, and I've been fortunate enough to like certain things that haven't put me on what it can be kind of scary parts of TikTok because there are scary parts of TikTok and that's a nice way of putting it um, where it folks are posting content that's not very wholesome and it's but I've been fortunate the things that I like kind of keep me out of there and um, you can easily report bad content that you you know, is, is violent, um, hateful, whatever, which is, is good that it's, it's pretty easy to report at the bottom of the, the TikTok that you're watching. Um, something a lot of people don't know is if you're watching TikTok, if you touch the screen, it'll pause the video because you might be like, Oh, I missed that thing. And then essentially the video, after you watch the video, it'll start over again. Uh, you flick it up to go to the next video. Um, every age group's on there now. It's, it was specifically, it seemed like a lot of it was targeted to a younger audience. And we, I, I, you know, at the beginning of the year, we would have said, TikTok, young audience, say that, you know, that's what you have to focus on to get the younger audience. Every age group is on TikTok now because of the pandemic. So many people migrated to that platform because it's great and easy. It's, it's, it's a great consumable product where you can just, you, you get lost in TikTok for, you know, as, for hours, if you'd like. And then more people, you know, being at home, create, you know, find it, found a new creative outlook with TikTok because of those editing tools and the music and the things that they offered. So don't think that you have to be a certain age to be on TikTok because it's it's huge. Like I, you know, you can find any age group on there. And like like we're talking with other platforms, it kind of take a little time and liking the things you like. You're going to see a lot mm -hmm. of. You're going to see a lot of underage twerking videos for the first like little bit you're on here. You're like, oh, like that's usually a thing where it's like, I, I don't think I'm, I, I, this isn't, no, you know, this isn't the thing I want to be on. But now I go through, you know, and it's a lot of kind of comedy stuff. It's a lot of, um, uh, a little bit of tech stuff. Um, I, I, I'm really kind of surprised at the number of, and I don't know if this is just a thread I went down, uh, military and police officers on TikTok just doing comedy. <laughs> so <laughs> like, it's, it's kind of fun. Um, so it was like, there's a lot of that stuff going on. Um, so it, it's, 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 it is a little bit of everything. I don't know what that was. I'm skipping that one. Um, and then you'll just see weird stuff like this guy, uh, going around a pole in a, like, which, uh, that's, 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 um, that's, that's weird. I'll send you this one directly, Katie. Yay. <laughs> like, and I think you're right. About. You, when you first get on a TikTok, you are served a lot of very young, pretty people. Yes. And you go, oh, I have no business being on this app. Yeah. And yeah. you, you, like I said, as you curate your feed and like the things that you want to see more of, because TikTok will serve you that, which is really great. And, um, but I, there's, I follow, there's a lot of body positive accounts, LGBTQ accounts. Um, there's a lot of, you know, I, animal accounts. I like cat, funny cat and dog videos. So I get a lot of that. I do a lot of good crying on TikTok because there's they'll save animals or there's a mm -hmm. lot of their coming out stories or um, transitioning stories where they tell about like I figured out there was a huge trend for the longest time where people were becoming their true authentic selves and watching those videos you can't help I'm like getting chills because you can't help but like cry to see when you see these people you know so many people just being so happy and folks just being you know saving animals it's just like there's so much that is there like if you want to find a particular content you'll find it on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's for a lot of platforms. Uh, one thing I like, mm -hmm. like I just sent you that, that weird video. So you know what I was talking <laughs> about. Um, it's very shareable. Um, it it yes. share, like, it's, it's like every platform when you go in here, uh, it, it, you know, you have a little share button at the bottom and then it has like people to send it to like in TikTok or, or your other platforms, like maybe on your phone. So that's, that's really cool. And you can link those. And, you know, I think you can link your Instagram and things like that. And you can also, all your tools are here too for reporting non-interested. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to use the same effect that you see in the video that's made, that's originated in TikTok, you can, you can do that too. 
Um, so like, I don't know what effect they used here. I, I don't know. <laughs> Using sound, you can use a, so like it's going to bring in the sound because they, they did a voiceover mm -hmm. thing. Oh, and I got a little, I got a little like weird, <laughs> I don't know what's happened to my microphone. It's a little distortion thing going on too. So, um, but no, I think yeah, really depending cool. on the particular, um, filter you use, it might change the way your voice sounds. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I think like one of the things that I like about TikTok that you kind of just mentioned was the fact that a lot of accounts allow you to download the video, mm -hmm. which is great for sharing with folks who don't have TikTok. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other apps, like for example, Twitter, it, you can't necessarily, it's not easy to send a tweet and have someone who's not on Twitter view that tweet, yeah. especially if there's media in it. Yeah. Because th th it's like, oh, sign in to Twitter. Like a yeah. lot of these apps, once you sign in, like with TikTok, it's nice to just download it and go, Bah! And uh, uh, one thing, uh, I will often make something in TikTok and use it across the board. Like we've been putting posters up and I'll put music under it in TikTok. And then that becomes the thing I share everywhere else. Um, Instagram will do the music thing. The problem with Instagram is they will, will not let you include the music if you download the video. From my experience. Um, so, which makes you want to originate in TikTok because they will. Uh, so I mean, that's again, <laughs> just a quick, like, Hey, I'd love to put a video to this and it like, you know, moves the poster a little bit and something a little more dynamic that I can use across the board. So, and it puts a little TikTok in your username in the corner. So, I mean, you know, uh, you know, that, that is, um, bothersome. You the watermark. That. Yeah. The watermark, but you can also crop it if you're just kind of using the mm -hmm. middle stuff. Like the posters don't usually fill the, you know, fill anything. So, um, a lot of options. Uh, just one, two more. Oh, yes, sorry. Go ahead. Just one more thing I want to real quick with TikTok is there's two things. If you're using TikTok to make it a better user experience across the board, one, you can now edit thumbnails to have a title. So you have text over your particular thumbnail. So if, for example, we were talking about, you know, we did a 60 second from this, um, when on the thumbnail, we could say, uh, talking about TikTok or tips about like, I follow some car, um, some folks that do car repair and it, they do the specific thing they're repairing. So I can go back into their feed and look and go, Oh, this was the time they talk about replacing a windshield wiper. Um, so that's, that's a, a way to make your content um, really stick out and um, make it searchable. Like when people are looking on your account, like if they're looking for something in particular. So I, and, I was wondering, cause I mm -hmm. saw this on like on, on some of the accounts like the rev and I'm like, Oh, are these videos I haven't seen? It's interesting. He's using that, that text effect, but you're telling me that is a label on top of the video in the thumbnail on his post. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So when you're creating your thumbnail, yeah, you can do it. So if you have, uh, I don't know, like if you, if there's a specific product you're trying to push or there's mm -hmm. a specific thing you, you want people to know that you're talking about. Yeah, do that. It's it just it's text over your thumbnail yeah. that you're able to do now. Like uh, like Rev Rev Ron Hunt, somebody we follow. He's a mm -hmm. TV personality and professional wrestler. He has a few other talents too. One he'll probably demonstrate last week on the Wrestling Mayhem show if you listened. Uh, <laughs> and uh, 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 you know he's like, well, want to be a pro wrestler? Hit me up, and then you click on it, and then it's it's uh, some wrestling training um, footage that that they have going on over there. So um, no, that's really cool. Um, we're at an hour mark, but I do want to touch on real quick LinkedIn because I think it's important because yeah. I think a lot of people were like, Hey, I've signed in. I got my resume on here. And then, um, <laughs> it, it's, and it may think it may feel like you're on there and it's like, well, I don't want to share the Facebook stuff. I want to be a professional, but the point is to still to be there. Right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. um, there was, some, I think it was a Vaynerchuk quote. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk quote that said, you don't, you don't do Maybe I heard from somewhere else. Uh, you don't do LinkedIn because you need a job now. You need LinkedIn for when you need a job later. And that's not just a job. It's other opportunities asked, you know, and things like that. Just just uh, um, being in a community and being aware and making people aware of you in a business sense, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, don't, don't necessarily have to um, uh, drop your TikToks. I'm sharing a lot of what we're doing in Sorgatron Media because it's media that we're making. So I, I think it's a good example of what we do. Um, but, uh, you know, but also stories of interest and things like that and just liking other things and commenting on other things in your feed. And I think that will also help, um, like TikTok, spend some time in it so it becomes the platform that you want it to be and, and curates the stuff that you want to see and interact with, right? Mm -hmm. So, also they have stories. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody's looking at them, but I'm putting stories up there. I don't think anybody's looking at them. I don't think that's really taken on over there. But yes. I, okay, I, so yeah. here, here's my big question for you. Mm -hmm. 
to end this all. As a content creator across all of these social media platforms, my video size changes depending on the platform. Mm. What, how, if I'm using my phone to create my content, what is the best way? Like, am I holding my phone like this in portrait, landscape? Like, how do I get the most out of a video? I would say. I think that's the million dollar question. <laughs> um, I would say at this point, if you're mostly concerned in making things for these platforms, you go vertical. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to be super holistic and using more than your phone, I would say you're making a widescreen video and then making sure the important stuff's in the middle, right? And then you can adjust accordingly. Um, I think Quibi. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. which, you know, I don't think enough people uh, participate in that. That's why they're gone. Uh, but, uh, but no, that, that'd be, it was interesting to see how they did that. But no, if you, you're a person, want to make content on your phone for people to see on their phone, this is the way it is. This one. Okay. My answer, my answer four years ago would have been different, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, no, you, you do a vertical. You, you absolutely do a vertical for, for this. And, and people are also used to seeing that content come over to YouTube. Uh, what was it? Uh, a good example is that Sarah Cooper that was doing the, the voiceovers. Uh, mm-hmm. of the president like she was she was she's the most recent one that I know started on TikTok and 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 now she has a Netflix special. Um again it was it was yeah the TikToks blew up but then also she brought it over to YouTube so not just the TikTok people cuz uh, TikTok's a big audience but it's not going to be as big as YouTube right? mm-hmm. frankly. But bringing those over to a YouTube you know, again all the share buttons are right there. Um, YouTube does a really good job of kind of, you know, we're seeing this because we're playing with something called Shorts, which is another version of TikTok in, in <laughs> stories that you can do now on YouTube that they're starting to roll out, which has been very helpful for us, by the way, as we've been experimenting the last couple of um, um, Animal Crossing tips with Katie are really over over there. So, um, but no, I, I think I think the vertical is fine. People are used to it. It's not as cringy as it used to be to do it that mm-hmm. way. People expect it. Um, and how many people have this and they're making the vi- the videos that way and holding their phone this way? I mean, mm-hmm. yes, yes. As a, as a content creator in that respect, yes. If you had some other considerations of, I want to do this kind of show, this kind of show, then I would say, you know, you do, you know, you do sideways and you modify like we do for this show. So mm-hmm. <laughs> everybody's in the middle of the shot. So it's mm-hmm. really easy to put this on a TikTok, <laughs> right? <laughs> So if you see, so if you see if it, if you're a host and you're like get in the middle of your shot, it's like why? Because this is gonna look like shit on TikTok. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's the real answer. And um and uh, no, absolutely. That, that's I think vertical is fine for now. So, um, you know, you're making it in the environment anyways, right? So, yeah. awesome. Well, I, we that was a good roundup of all the things touch base on all the social media. I hope you guys uh, got something out of that. Uh, Katie, where can people uh, find out where you're doing the social media? Uh, on Instagram, Kate Marie PGH, and then K Dutters on the Twitter. And of course, you have been using your social media in the last year more to um, communicate your story this past year yes. versus you're used to mostly communicating other people's stories and businesses and abroad. Yeah, that's been a difference as, as a, what I like to call myself. I like to call myself a digital storyteller. Mm -hmm. Um, It's been definitely a shift from focusing on a product uh, to myself and Mm -hmm. what my, um, my cancer story has been, my personal cancer story has been. And that's been, I I definitely, I am going to take that information and what I've learned to uh, small and apply to small businesses. Once I get back into like doing things like this full time is it's 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 a transferable skill which is i think important for people to know is like a lot of what you're doing on the personal level translates to a professional level and vice versa so just don't discount yourself absolutely thank you so much and thank you everybody out there that have been uh uh, checking us out throughout 2020 as things have shifted and moved around and i miss people in studio for sure uh (laughs) Uh, but I uh, hope everybody has a good new year, has a good 2021. And uh, thank you, everybody. This has been your awesome cast for the year. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome new year.
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.